Hey, people of Earth, today we're diving headfirst into the world of Slack bots with a sprinkle of AI magic on there. I myself am a member of a few Slack communities like the MLOps community, and every now and again, I wish I had a personal assistant to sift through the most important threads. There are over 20,000 people in the MLOps community Slack, and I love being a part of every single conversation in there. So in this video, we're building our very own Slack Digest agent using the awesome power of Pydantic AI to keep up to date with all of our favorite Slack threads. Whether that's in a community you enjoy being part of or maybe your own noisy work Slack Let's face it, Slack can be a bit of a black hole of messages. If you're not on top of the messages, it's easy to get lost and feel overwhelmed. Our bot will find the best threads and summarize what's happening. First things first, let's set up our Python project and grab all the tools we need. Then we'll introduce our star of the show, the Pydantic AI agent. You can think of it as our brainy bot with a knack for understanding Slack chatter. We'll teach it what to look for and how to dish out those summaries in a way that we like to get them. Next up, we'll do a bit of coding and tell our agent how to summarize those threads. Finally, we'll unleash our agent into the wild Slack jungle and see it in action. So let's get started. Let's talk Pydantic AI for a second. This Python framework you can think of as an AI sidekick, making sure your code is clean and efficient. What's cool about Pydantic AI, you ask? Well, it's one of the most straightforward and productive agentic frameworks on the market. You can easily grasp the concepts of Pydantic AI and build your own agent in a matter of hours. It's not all roses and tie-dye though, and so we'll talk about some of the gotchas that Pydantic has in a moment. To boost developer productivity, Pydantic AI uses a thing called type safety. You may have heard of it, and this is to keep your code neat and tidy and preemptively prevent those pesky errors. As for debugging, fear not. Pydantic AI is built to work well with what the creators have spun out of it as a startup called Pydantic Logfire. Some may even say that's the whole reason Pydantic AI exists, but that's for a whole nother video and not for today. Logfire is like a detective that helps you find and fix all those bugs in your code, and we will be looking at it at the end of this tutorial. All right, folks, so we've got our goal to conquer the chaos of our Slack channels and transform them into sweet, digestible insights. Well, let's look at an architecture diagram because everybody loves a good one of those. Let's bring up the MLOps digester real fast. To illustrate how our digester creates these valuable summaries, here's the gist. Inputs. We feed the system a system prompt, basically what we want it to do. And then we also provide the API key and model name of our AI that we're going to be using. We will use additional context as dependencies, such as the name of the Slack thread and the workspace being processed. The agents. The Slack thread digest agent and Slack workspace digest agent are our workhorses. The thread agent focuses on individual conversations while the workspace agent looks at the entire workspace. AI power. This is our open AI model that provides the intelligence to understand and summarize the Slack content. And outputs. We get two main outputs. Slack thread digest, which is a summary of the Slack thread, including title, summary, takeaway, tags, links, and tools mentioned. And on the other side, we've got the Slack workspace digest. This is a broader analysis of the workspace highlighting top topics flops, moods, overall topics, and different trends. Now that we have a high level view, let's zoom in and see how our digest task actually unfolds. This is where the rubber hits the pavement. This diagram shows how our digest 
task springs to life. Think of it as a recipe with these key ingredients. Our digest setting. Our control panel for deciding what to analyze, which Slack channels, time frames, and keywords we want to hone in on. Initialization. This is getting our tools ready. It means starting up helpful services like logging, loading our AI models like OpenAI, and activating our agents who do the bulk of the work. Finally, it connects to external sources like Slack. Fetch Slack content step. This is using our Slack client to grab all the relevant information like channels, messages, and replies. Digest Slack content step. This is where the AI magic happens. Our Slack thread, digest agent, summarizes individual conversations while the Slack workspace digest agent analyzes broader trends across the workspace. The result, a structured digestible summary of all our Slack activity. So to better organize our code, we split our abstractions into individual modules as our application needs to be executed in a single workflow. We are going to put the main steps in a task.py module. Other code units will manage separate aspects such as the UI, external systems, and agentic components. Here's the breakdown. Entry points. We've got two main doors into our system. One is the CLI entry point, that's scripts.py, which lets us run our digester from our terminal like a true hacker. The other is the GUI entry point. This is interfaces.py for those who prefer clicking buttons and seeing pretty images. The brains at the heart of it all, we've got tasks.py, which is where the magic happens. We define high level tasks here, like fetch messages from Slack or summarize this conversation, getting things done. Our agents in agents.py are the action heroes. They're responsible for actually doing the tasks. Need to talk to the Slack API? Agents are on it. Need to whip up a summary using some fancy AI? Agents got your back. Models and LLMs? Well, speaking of AI, we've got models.py, and this is where we connect to our large language models. These are the brainy bits that help us understand and summarize the information. Global services. Services.py is our toolbox. It holds all the handy functions and tools that different parts of our digester might need. External APIs. We need to pull in data from other sources besides Slack right? Well, if we do, we've got clients.py as our gateway to the outside world. Slack. Of course, we can't forget our trusty Slack workspace, the source of all the juicy information that we're going to be analyzing. And finally, the star of the show, our digest task. This is the output, the gold nugget of wisdom that we are after. It's the concise, insightful summary of our Slack conversations, ready to be used for whatever MLOps magic we have in mind. Okay, let's take a moment to get our hands dirty on the keyboard. First, we need to install Pydantic AI. This can be done using PIP, Poetry, or UV. But I highly recommend using UV. <laughs> Once Pydantic AI is installed, we need to create a project file, and this file will contain all of the information about our project, including the name, version, description, authors, readme, requirements, licenses, and keywords. Now that we have our project file, we need to set up our environment. This involves setting up the OpenAI API key and the Slackbox token. The OpenAI API key is used to access the... Yep, you guessed it, OpenAI API. And the Slack bot token is used to access the Slack API, which is how we're going to be interacting with Slack. Now let's have a look at this first function we create. To OpenAI model, 
It takes our OpenAI model settings and extracts the model name and the API key. Then it packages those up into our OpenAI model so we can have our agent call this later on in the code. Note that Pydantic uses a nice facility called get secret value to hide the OpenAI API key until it's used somewhere in your code and avoid those precious secrets from leaking. We're now going to create two data classes, Slack thread depends and Slack workspace depends. And that is for organizational purposes. Slack thread depends pinpoints a specific conversation using the channel name. You can think of this like a GPS that provides information on the Slack thread name that is currently being digested. Similarly, Slack workspace depends provides the bigger picture with the workspace name, like a map of your entire Slack world. With these clearly defined data classes, we're bringing context along our Slack data. So now we create another function to connect to Slack. This to Slack client function is our key to unlocking Slack's juicy conversations. It uses the Slack.web client to establish a secure connection thanks to our securely handled bot token we talked about earlier. With this connection, we can dive into Slack, grab the discussion feed, and feed them to our MLOps digester. Now it's time to define the heart of our digester. These Pydantic models, Slack Thread Digest and Slack Workspace Digest, are like our summary templates. Slack Thread Digest captures the essence of a single thread, its title, summary, key takeaways, relevant tags, useful links, and mentioned tools. Slack Workspace Digest zooms out to the workspace level and highlights, as we said before, the top threads, the flops, the overall mood, trending topics, and noteworthy sharings. These models provide the structure for the concise, insightful summaries our digester will produce. This is the function where we create our MLOps digester agent. First, it extracts the agent configs from the Pydantic settings. Second, it takes a dynamic system prompt that uses the Slack thread depends as additional context. Remember, this is the class responsible for providing the current Slack channel name. And after all this, it returns the agent ready to be used by the MLOps digester task. The neat part is we can easily adapt the agent context without touching the agent definition. Everything is passed through configuration controlled by the agent caller. Like the previous function, the Slack workspace depends dependency, <laughs> depends dependency, I know, gives the agent the workspace name and the agent system prompt method includes that workspace name in the instructions. So they're passed along. Now let's bring it all together. We give our Slack thread digest agent the powerful OpenAI model and set it loose with run sync, feeding it the Slack thread prompt and the Slack thread depends. This gives us a concise Slack thread digest result. We do the same for our Slack Workspace Digest agent, providing it with the same model, the Slack prompt, and the Slack Workspace depends. This produces high-level Slack Workspace Digest result. Voila! We've extracted the essence of Slack conversations, ready to be presented to our users. Our MLOps Digester is complete pretty much. Now, let's check out Logfire, this observability tool that we talked about in the beginning. It gives us some insights into what's going on under the hood with the MLOps Digest. 
The colorful bar visualizes our agent's actions, each representing a run of our digester. We can see when things are running smoothly and when there might be issues. If you click on a bar, we get detailed information about that specific run, including the prompt, the model, and the processing time. This helps us pinpoint any bottlenecks or issues if they come about. Logfire also lets us analyze trends, identifying patterns and optimizing our digester for peak performance with powerful filters and queries. Now that we've got all these pieces in place, let's see this MLOps digester in action. So here's where we provide the instructions. We tell it what kind of data to fetch, which Slack channels to analyze, and any other specific requests. Hit that submit button and watch the magic happen. Our agent springs to life, sifting through Slack conversations and summarizing it all into those neat little lists. So look at those insights. We've got some tops, the flops, the overall moods, and the hottest topics trending in the MLOps community right now. There you have it. Our MLOps digester has transformed a sea of Slack messages into a clear, concise, and insightful report. We've tamed the chaos and extracted all this knowledge. But let's be real, no tool is perfect. So I wanna give you the good, the bad, and the ugly of Pydantic AI. It definitely has its strengths. It's incredibly easy to pick up, even if you're new to AI. The type safety features are a lifesaver. They make your code more readable, reliable, and easy to debug. And compared to some other frameworks out there, it strikes a great balance between power and simplicity. But there are some corpse to keep in mind. The global namespace approach can make configuration a bit tricky, especially as your project grows. You don't want to pass every external setting as environment variables, do you? While this is fine for building a web app, there's too many knobs to tune with real agentic systems. And if you're looking to squeeze every ounce of performance out of the latest LLMs, you might find Pydantic AI a bit limiting. For instance, if you want to use the tool provided by the LLM out of the box, like code execution or web search, you're screwed. All in all, Pydantic is a fantastic framework and tool for whipping up a quick and effective AI agent. It's great for projects like our MLOps Digester, where we need a straightforward solution that gets the job done. Before those massive enterprise level projects, you might need something a bit more heavy duty. As we discussed in the MLOps community Slack, most people in the field are building their own abstractions to keep pace with innovation, features, and avoid going into potential dead ends. Of course, this is only the beginning of playing with our digester. Some potential next steps and features we may want to add are agent authentication with something like Arcade AI so that our digester can enter into private conversations and channels as the user themselves. Or we'll want to create a command from inside of Slack to summon the digester on a thread and summarize it right there. We might want to swap out OpenAI API for a locally running version of, who knows, DeepSeek maybe. Other ideas would be to take these Slack summaries and package them up into a newsletter digest so that people can get updated via email about what's happening in the 20 different Slack channels and Discord channels and Twitter feeds that they are part of. Or we can even try to create another LLM call that will find hot takes from these summaries that someone like myself can use as inspiration to write about on a LinkedIn post. I want to hear what you build with Pydantic AI. So subscribe to our MLOps newsletter, stay informed, hit me up, and check out the future technical tutorials that we will be releasing. May the agentic force be with you.